Music is my life. Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, where Imagine we get to speak to Hugh yeah. Grant at the European premiere of Florence Foster Jenkins. Can you imagine what that must feel like? To hold 3,000 people in the cup of your hand. Mm. <laughs> I would like to take some more lessons. What about a pianist? Yes, I shall need someone. Someone with passion. St. Clair Bayfield's story in itself is quite remarkable, isn't it? Was yeah. that an attractive prospect? Yeah, it was very much so. Um, he was this man who, he, he was sort of English, illegitimate heir to uh, aristocracy, and ended, ended up in New York as a failed actor in the 30s, and uh, really was going nowhere until he met this curious woman who was a millionaireess and thought she could sing and, and couldn't sing, and together they ran these musical societies in New York and attracted all sort of high society. And this was his little world. and something he had to cling to because he had nothing else and um, so in this film you see him very supportive of her you're never quite sure is it real love or is this because he's got nothing else now I must warn you I work very hard I study an hour every day sometimes too so music is obviously a, very much at the heart of yes. this film so how much did that help or hinder your process when it comes to composing um, I think the, the era, the 40s, and the operatic scope of it, having a big orchestra that can really sound big, uh, like in an opera house, was the, the two elements that I tried to use. And uh, the piano is also very much at the, at the base of this, because who's Florence yes. sings again. So was that the instrument that kind of kick-started you for inspiration? No, I, I, there's a little bit of piano, but I could not... I had to, to respect the toes of, of you know, the singing and the piano playing. So I tried to to make, create another kind of environment to that. There's obviously elements where we're kind of laughing with Florence because of her awful singing. So how much of that kind of comedic kind of element is is it is kind of threaded through your, your music? Well, actually, I tried to to leave that alone to the audience, and I and I I try to go for the emotion or prepare the audience to this moment of love and then I let it go and and I know that a moving scene is coming because that's the great thing about the script and the, and the, the directing that you like her you make fun of her but at the same time you moved by her and that's the um, that's what we've done I think and was Stephen very um, did he have a, a, a very definite idea of what he wanted from you he, he always hides it, but he has one. He says he doesn't, and that we meet at the recordings, but that's not true. He, in fact, he knows very well what would work and wouldn't work. So he guides me very gently, you know, with a, you know, with a, a grump or a, or a cough. And you know where you stand. <laughs> yes. And then I know. She's remarkable, isn't she? She can't be a little flat. Flat? <laughs> Just a tad. Well, if you can forgive Madame Florence her little eccentricities, you will find her to be a most generous person. <laughs> the lady is a lesson in courage, and that's why we love her. Without the producers, there is no film as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Well, can you tell some more people? Because <laughs> yeah. normally no one's interested in us at all. We are like... Well, I would imagine making a story like this, this is based on a, on a, a, tr a real person. There's, a, there's an element yes. of responsibility for you guys. Well, I think with any time that you're, you know, Stephen and I made a film recently called Philomena. And so, you know, you're, I mean, with Philomena, obviously, you know, in that story, you're talking about living, you know, with the person who's a real life story and she's alive that you're telling. And in this, this occasion, you know, there aren't that many people alive who actually, you know, really intimately knew Florence. So with anything, of course, you've got the great responsibility of being, you know, reflecting their life with as much integrity and as much honesty as you possibly can portray, bearing in mind the person is no longer with us. So we've done our best, in other words. And, and with the logistics, New York is very different from the yes, period that you're yeah. shooting in. So tell us more about the locations that you saw. Well, that, that's the biggest challenge, really, has been to do New York not in New York. So, you know, it's quite amazing, I think, um, that we managed to make the um, Hammersmith Apollo into the Carnegie Hall and Liverpool, and into, Liverpool into New York. Yes. And in fact, and in fact there was a review, yes. I think, yesterday saying, brilliant to see how beautiful New York looks, you know. I think, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. Yes. <laughs> yes, the back of. Um, 
What's it called? Brick, the, 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 no, the Academy in Brixton. No, the Brixton Academy. Brandon is Brixton Academy is yeah. one of our streets as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone that. Yeah. Yes. And, and Park Lane as well. You shot there as well, did you? Yes, in the Ritz, yeah, the hotel. Park Lane Hotel. We've done our best, and I think it looks like it feels like the period. And also, if you were shooting in New York today, it doesn't feel like New York in the 40s anyway. So. You know, hopefully people will believe that we're in that time and place. Well, it's a bit late now if they don't. So. <laughs> and I can't not speak to you about, obviously, the casting of Meryl Streep, um, a lady that can bring so much sensitivity and layers um, to, a, to a person that and must sing. have... And sing. That's yes. the other thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder whether how, in, how hard it was for her to be able to sing badly and not actually damage her voice. With the, well, she said a very interesting thing right at the beginning when she'd listened to a lot of the original recordings. She said the interesting thing about Florence is not that she was very, very bad, but she was nearly good. And I think that's yeah. the hint she took, you know, to make her nearly good and then go. <laughs> we could have been a family. We are a family. Are we not happy? This is my favourite place in the whole world. And I'm going to sing here. Florence Foster Jenkins, how did she come into your life? Um, I, I, I was just messing around on, um, I just heard her on uh, YouTube and uh, heard, heard her singing the Queen of the Night aria and I thought it was hilarious at first. Um, and, but then I thought, you know, it was incredibly touching as well. Uh, there was a sincerity to her voice and it was incredibly moving. So I sort of dug more into her life and discovered the sort of extraordinary drama of her journey to Carnegie Hall. And it, it, after, you know, after a few days, I think it was, I started to think that it was potentially a good film, a good basis for a film. Were you, were, was it very important for you as well, to, for all the, the supporting actors around her and, and, and those characters to have their story as well and have a richness in their character? Abso absolutely, because it's, we're, you know, it's really the story of, 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 of three people. It, it's, it's Florence, her relationship with her English um, husband, St. Clair Bayfield, who's played by Hugh Grant, and the, tender, the, the tenderness and complexity of their relationship, uh, but also... Um, um, Simon Helberg plays her pianist, Cosme McMoon, and it's, it's the interplay between the three of them, how they make this journey together that, uh, that the story's about. Was it quite inspiring for you, because obviously it's a very different time for women, um, they don't necessarily have the voice that we do now, ha having to kind of explore that, um, you know, because she is a very strong woman and she really did make things happen, didn't she? She did a lot for musical charity. She, she did. She was uh, she she inherited quite a bit of money, and she uh, she spent most of it encouraging the musical life of New York at the time. This was and particularly our story is set during the war when there was no money around for uh, orchestras, etc. And she really kept the musical life going and was relentless in putting on shows and broke the careers of lots of young singers. And Stephen Free is bringing him on board to to, 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 be, to be the helm of the orchestra really. Uh, absolutely and Stephen made Dangerous Liaisons which is one of my favorite films um, in the world and I think it's an absolutely brilliant film and it's been a real joy working with him. I've never known anyone work quite so hard and I've never been pushed quite so hard. Uh, I think we are up to about 30 or 40 drafts by the end of it all. So I've never known such intense um, uh, attention to detail. And uh, I've learned a hell of a lot. <laughs> this is what we live for, isn't it? This moment. your diaphragm, Florence. Oh. Do you want to try another take? Well, I don't see why. That seemed perfect to me. 